Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and I. Oh, I scared the sh. <laughs> As I was saying, today I am talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I went hands on with for three full hours. This is my brutally honest opinion. Now, a lot of people always think brutally honest means you're destroying the game, you're shredding it, you're tearing it apart. It's awful. It's like, no, this is just my unfiltered take. It's the Maddie take. What I liked, what I didn't like, it's going at you, all the data in the world that you could possibly need for this game. I'm just throwing it your way and you can decide if the game's good, bad, if you're interested, all that jazz. So in order to start the conversation for Valhalla, an Assassin's Creed game that I've been very excited for, I've covered it a bit on the channel, I wanted to take a look very briefly at Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The reason for that is I feel like in order to decide whether or not you're gonna be interested in Valhalla, you need to know where you stand on Odyssey because there are a lot of shared elements here, but also Assassin's Creed Odyssey did trade a bit of the Assassin's Creed identity for, and I put this in quotes, innovation so you're gonna see it right away the combat starts up you got abilities for both ranged attacks melee attacks and they are that mixture of arcadey yet visceral that odyssey really built itself off of for example odyssey had the spartan kick that would launch people a mile away and i love that about the game but some people thought it broke their immersion well guess what in assassin's creed valhalla you dig your axes into someone you kick them off your axe and guess what happens they go a mile away and i think that's awesome, but some people don't like that. I understand that, I respect that, but just know the ability-based combat is back. It is very much arcadey in that sense. You're gonna charge at people, grab them, bash them into walls. You're gonna jump up, slam the ground with extreme force and kind of do an area of effect attack. There's a lot of this style of combat inside Valhalla and it does capture some of that brutal Viking spirit that the game's really going for when you combine that with its absolutely superb score just give that a listen here It is just an unfairly good score so far. And I usually don't get that vibe from a preview, but this one stuck out like a sore thumb. They seem to have something pretty special there. But as you've noticed, lots of action, lots of in your face, visceral kills. Is this an Assassin's Creed game? You're probably gonna be asking yourself that question. I didn't have a lot of stealth in my overall time with the game. There was like one farm I approached where I assassinated a couple of targets, but Outside of that, it really wasn't a major part of the gameplay. There was raids, which have been talked about before launch, and this was really cool because that's where the music kicks up. You get vocals and the tracks, and you charge these lands that are taken over with your entire longship full of fellow Vikings. You engage in these large-scale battles. It's really cool, but as I said, it sacrifices that Assassin's Creed identity. I played all of the main story missions that were available here in this demo. There was no Assassin's Creed to be found. However, the developers did insist that the Creed will be very much a part of the story. After all, Eivor does have the Hidden Blade, but let's talk a little bit about that story. They didn't really show too much. What the story did present to me was one major choice where you decide whether or not someone lives or dies, and this will affect someone who's gonna be the King of East Anglia, the section of the world that I did most of my playing within. Eivor himself didn't seem as charming as say like Cassandra from Odyssey. He just seemed very straightforward. What you see is what you get. What you'd expect like this almost honorable, yet combat thirsty fella. That's kind of what Eivor is. But I only played as male Eivor. I would suggest checking out other previews as per usual, but see what someone thinks about female Eivor. I didn't get to test her out, but I wasn't overall in love with male Eivor, but I didn't like hate him either. It was just kind of there. Since combat is sort of a centerpiece of this discussion, let's keep talking about that. What I found was really cool is there is this surprising amount of stamina management within the gameplay for Valhalla. So anytime you dodge or roll, your stamina bar is gonna go down. As you land attacks, whether they be heavy attacks on the shields of your enemy or you parry their attacks by timing your block 
with one of their attacks, you'll start to knock their stamina down. When you do so and their stamina is completely wiped out, you can perform what's called a stun attack by clicking on the right stick. Or if you've knocked them over, say you use that ability I mentioned in the beginning where you dig your axe into them and you kick them off the axe and they go flying and they're on their back, you can perform what's called a stomp. And both these moves do extreme damage and they add a little bit more interactivity than what you're used to in the Assassin's Creed combat system. I like this change. I thought overall it was really good for what they were trying to do, which was engage you, make it very action packed, make it very interactive with a lot of things going on. Meanwhile, while this is happening, I have all of my fellow Vikings using a battering ram to knock down a gate to get into the next area. So there is this sense of scale and war, but once again, it doesn't feel truly like an Assassin's Creed game. It feels more like a, a history series that's allowing me to go different points in time and then calling it Assassin's Creed. There is a skill tree, right? So they have three different trees for your skills. There is the Raven, the Bear, and the Wolf. The Raven is for Assassins, the Bear is for Melee, and the Wolf is for Range. As you do spend points in this skill tree, you're gonna see your overall, quote, power raise. Now, what I found strange is, for example, if I were in the ranged tree and I started investing in skills there, there would still be skills within the range tree about increasing my overall melee damage because what this skill tree serves as is your power level to take on various main story missions. I don't know if that means that certain sections of the world are actually gated off to the player. Let's say I'm not power level 70. Will I get destroyed in one part of the world versus being in the current area I was in East Anglia where I was power level, I wanna say like 55 or something. So yeah, the skill tree wasn't the type where you're like picking your play style saying, you know, I'm gonna go down the wolf path or I'm gonna go down the raven path and assassinate everyone. Like the assassinations aren't these guaranteed one hits from what I saw because there were various assassination based abilities that quote, increase the damage of your assassination, end quote. So this was something a lot of people were concerned about and I think as long as you invest in the Raven Tree, you will have those one shots, but just know that eventually, let's say you're not putting a lot of points in there and you go to what is, I imagine, a higher level area, you're not gonna just one hit everyone with the Assassinate. It will be like, say, Odyssey, where you'll stab someone from behind and knock out half their health bar and you'll feel like a dud over it. I did ask for a lot of feedback on Twitter about what I should keep an eye out for while playing both Watch Dogs as well as Assassin's Creed. A lot of people told me, A, to see if the leaked gameplay lined up with what I personally experienced and also asked about the settlement in the game. So let me start off with point A, which is the leaked gameplay. I did see it myself. It was very buggy. The only time I encountered heavy bugs, heavy glitches was inside the conversation themselves. Otherwise, the game ran fine. Battles themselves performed fine. It didn't seem overly chaotic. It was responsive, more responsive than most Assassin's Creed games. I'm not saying it was great per se. I enjoyed it, but I'm not saying it set the standard for new action combat systems, but it did work. Overall though, what I saw in that gameplay didn't seem to match up with my personal experience, but that was mine. As for the settlement system, I didn't see that at all. I had certain moments in the story where I added people to my longship where they could help me on Viking raids. So you started to see familiar faces, but yeah, man, I did not see the settlement sadly. So I can't answer any questions on that. Continuing on with looking at Odyssey, one of the major problems with that game was its bloat. There was a lot of content. Some of it was good. Some of it wasn't that great but it led to a lot of level gating, holding the player back from indulging in all the content in the world because let's say I just wanted to go binge the main story. I could not do that at all. I had to make sure I played all the side quests so my character was of the right level to go ahead and then leap into the next main story mission. Is that the case here? With the main story missions, as I said, there is a required power level or suggested one. When I went to go ahead and raid this one castle, it did say I had a suggested power level of 55. However, the side content surrounding it doesn't seem as bloated and does quickly level you up. So there's a number of bits of side content to partake in. You have world events, collectibles, raids, naturally synchronization points are in the game. Daughters of Legion, which are these mini boss fights that kind of remind me of Greedfall in a way. They're built into the open world and I thought these are pretty cool. But if you've noticed here, I did not say the term 
side quests. Now, I asked my demoist during my playthrough, are there side quests like Odyssey where I can have this self-contained story there? And the answer I got was pretty dodgy. It was like, well, yeah, like kind of like that. Just, yeah, there are. But what I experienced were shorter intermittent things like visiting a shrine and finding someone praying there for Vikings to cease their combat and having that person who was praying or encountering these children who stole money from me. And so I quickly tracked them down. They told me a little story about them not having much food. And I had a choice on whether or not I wanted to give them food, some money, or just walk away entirely. And they said they would see me later. They gave me a necklace, which was a quest item, which I would then, I imagine, use later on in the game. So some of these world events are quests, but what I just described to you, these were like 30 second to a minute diversions. None of them took up a lot of time. So on top of these little world events, you'll have these moments where you'll go into a cave and you'll look for some lost treasure. The content structure is very much built in the vein of, I'd say more like Assassin's Creed Origins. But when it comes to straight up side quests that are these expanded storylines, it doesn't handle itself quite like Odyssey did. And as someone who really likes RPGs and this game was marketed as kind of like a Viking action RPG, I was a little disappointed by that. But in exchange is the value of bloat being cut down. You can just cut through these areas. These quests don't absorb a ton of your time. Yes, it can feel maybe checklisty. I think that's almost a staple with Ubisoft at this point. But ultimately, I think it is for the betterment of the game because this does not look like the 90 to 100 hour time sink that Assassin's Creed Odyssey could end up. I feel this game could be much, much shorter. It does feel like a game you could finish in like 20 to 30 hours. Now that's just me ballparking it. They did not tell me that, but based off the content progression, how much there was to do and how quickly I leveled up and how quickly it went by, right? Because not a lot of this demanded your time. The most demand of your time was absolutely raids. But even those I thought were fun and they were fresh and new. But I mentioned Assassin's Creed Origins and this was a game that I remember making my 10 hour impression video and then I made a video with my full review and my 10 hour impressions were like, hey, this is pretty good. And then I spent more time with it and by the mid game, it felt very repetitive. It felt very samey. And I do worry about that with this game. The reason I say that is because as I encountered some of the side objectives in the world, even these world events, as they call them, these mini side quests, a lot of them involve me either A, moving a bookshelf and finding something hidden behind there, like a chest or a stair set that would lead me somewhere else, or a wooden barricade that I'd either take down by a strong attack or by placing an oil barrel that I'd set on fire, it would explode and allow me inside. One time was a well, one time was like a floor pad, I could just blow that up. And so I worry that at first here, the three hours I played, you know, this is solid, this works, this is good. But once I head in 10, 15, 20 hours, will that wear on me? Is that why they cut down some of the bloat? Because it can be a little repetitive. There were some hilarious mini games though that really added personality to this game. There was flighting, which is indeed Viking rap battles. And you just try to clap back on one another. And it's pretty hilarious. Even more funny is the drinking mini game, which you can compete with people on who can drink mead the quickest. And I really enjoyed this too. There was also some type of like dice mini game i didn't get to test this out because sadly it said it was not available in the demo but there are a lot of different things to do in the world there's a lot of personality here and it was enjoyable my time with it was good but i do worry that i have the assassin's creed origin syndrome where maybe after 10 hours after 15 hours it does wear me down a little bit but right now general impressions were solid but this isn't super assassin's creedy it is Viking the game with Assassin's Creed on the cover. And so I leave that with you, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. What do you think of the game based off what I've said, what you've heard, what you've read? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons who continue to support this little corner of the internet. And I'll talk with you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.